Dr. Brad Miller from Motor Spinal Health and Wellness Center. I'm here with Rob Landis today. Uh, we're coming to you today to uh, talk to you a little bit about health and healing uh, in light of some of the situations that we're in with the pandemic. Uh, some of the things we can do uh, to help uh, reduce our chances of disease processes and comor comorbidities that go along with uh, the recent uh, pandemic that we're under. Uh, we're not going to get into a lot of the controversial type of things. Uh, what we want to do today is empower everybody just to live uh, their healthy lives. Uh, when I did some quick research with the CDC based on comorbidities because when you hear them talking about the virus, they say that uh, uh, the vir you have a greater risk of dying if you have some of these comorbidities. I did some research and the CDC for 2020 uh, showed these comorbidities, health, uh, heart disease, uh, cancer, stroke, diabetes are, are some of the ones that are, are preventable for the most part. Um, and it showed that uh, in 2020, uh, 690,000 people died of heart disease, 345,000 uh, died of COVID. So what you can see is some of these more comorbidities along with uh, cancer was 600,000 deaths, 159 deaths from stroke, uh, 100,000 deaths with uh, diabetes. So uh, these comorbidities that they're talking about that gives you a greater risk of dying from COVID, there was actually 1.5 million people that died of the comorbidities. So these comorbidities just give you a greater chance of dying, period. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to empower you in this series uh, to kind of uh, take on these responsibilities of your health and help to live a healthier life uh, within this pandemic and also on the other side of this pandemic. Uh, we're going to do a few part series. Uh, this one's going to be on diet. Uh, then we're going to do one on exercise. Uh, we're going to do some on supplementation to help with immune function. And then one on stress, fear, and sleep. Uh, so we hope that you enjoy this. Today we're going to talk a little bit about diet. Before we get started, I want to do a disclaimer. Uh, none of this information is uh, designed to diagnose or treat any of your current conditions. Everyone is different. So we ask that you take this information we're going to be sharing with you, talk to your doctor about it, and determine whether it's uh, appropriate for you. Correct? Yep. Sounds All right. So... Uh, we talked a little bit about, and we're going to keep this really simple, so it's, it's things that you can implement right away. Uh, if you were to talk to people about diet, uh, what they could do right now, implement uh, with these people that are having some of these comorbidities, what, what would be some of the things that you would talk to them about, or, or one or two things that are, are start today uh, to change? If we were picking two things, Brad, the number one thing is going to be decrease your consumption of simple sugars. So <clears throat> there was a, some research out of uh, San Francisco that showed that when people were taking 75 grams a day of sugar in, now 75 grams sounds like a lot, but it's not. It's like maybe two sodas, uh, a yogurt, and a soda, which is how a lot of people get their liquid sugar, right? But it depressed the immune system function for about five hours. It makes, basically makes the immune system, it makes it more difficult for it to identify invaders. So that's the number one is really think about decreasing sugar intake and how, like we talked about sugary drinks. What if you replace one sugary drink with a glass of water or a glass of unsweetened tea? Just one. We're not saying don't drink any sugar drinks, but start thinking about ways you can do that. What if you replaced one snack with a piece of fruit and some cheese or one um, prepared food with something that's real like carrots or celery? Just one. Inch by inch, life is sense. Yard by yard, life is hard. And so if you can make those little incremental, that's number one. Yeah, uh, you know, when we're looking at those sugary drinks, it's so insidious how that, that gets into our system. Uh, I would imagine if people did this one particular thing, now there's a lot of things we can do to increase our overall health and lose weight. But losing weight, if we're not putting the proper things into our bodies, then all the other things we're going to talk about is not going to, not going to work well. But I would imagine that some of you listening to this, if you took that one piece of advice, you'd probably see a 5% or 10% loss in your weight over the course of the year. That doesn't sound like a lot, but research shows us that a, t a 5 to 10% chance, really, or 5% reduction, uh, starts to reduce your chances of developing some of these comorbidities by a lot. So a little, little bitty steps like what you talked about uh, can change that a lot. What would you tell them, I, I tell my patients a lot that uh, as far as eating, what's the appropriate things to eat? Uh, eat what God made, mm -hmm. eat lots of different colors, 
uh, eat things that rot and eat them before they do. <laughs> so, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts about that? <laughs> Yes, that's right. It should be real, and ideally it comes from the ground. It's not in a box, it's not combined with lots of other ingredients, and it couldn't sit on the shelf and not go bad in a week. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The, the majority of the stuff that we're eating right now, uh, by the way, guys, none of that stuff's really in any of your drive throughs uh, So when you're parking <laughs> in those drive throughs uh, so uh, decrease, your, decrease your sugar consumption, decrease that processed uh, food intake, uh, so we don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of information. Those are two simple things that you can implement right now and really start to reduce your chances of developing these comorbidities comorbid and even help to manage some of those comorbidities that you may already have. Uh, so we're going, to be, uh, uh, we're going to come back in part two and uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about exercise and activities and things you can do uh, as far as getting out and being active and helping to reduce your chances of these comorbidities uh, in that regard. Thank you.